Hey y'all, you're watching Hordy's Garage. The dash pad on my 94 Fleetwood here has definitely seen better days. We've got cracks, it's chipping apart. The whole thing is in multiple pieces. All that time baking in the sun really does a number on it. So today we're gonna go ahead, remove this, and then recover it. Get it look just like brand new. Let's check it out. One of the first things you're gonna do, figure out what color vinyl you got. From my research, I could find out that this Cadillac is equipped with light neutral doesn't really sound like a whole lot. So I ordered up a couple of samples from Albright Supply. This one's pretty close, but the grain is off. The color's a little bit off. Right here, just looks a little bit too dark. This one's very close, but this almost might be a little bit too light. The one I ended up ordering right here. Dead perfect match. It's Moburn Corinthian Automotive Vinyl light neutral. The materials we're going to be using today, 7 and 10 millimeter, and all of the extensions and everything we want, your random assortment of trim removal tools, padded dash filler that's going to allow us to get those cracks nice and smoothed out, some spray adhesive, and of course our great big giant roll of vinyl. Step number one in getting this dash pad off, we're going to need to access the retaining nuts and bolts here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this piece of faux wood here using our little trim pullers. Just some little clips here holding it on. Nothing crazy, but we do want to be careful as to not snap our little plastic piece right in half. There we go. See just a couple of little clips there. And we got one more piece right here on the driver's side. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Nice and easy. See, that's why you bring a couple different ones of these. If it's not trying to go at first, switch it up. Again, don't want to break it. Now that we have the wood grain removed, we're gonna look in here. We've got one seven millimeter right to the left of the driver's wheel. Another seven millimeter to the right of the driver's wheel. There should be a 10 millimeter there, but it's, it's apparently missing. And one last 10 millimeter right there. After that, what we're gonna do is lift this up. There's nothing really holding it on remove these two uh, sensors. I believe they're for the automatic headlights. They just kind of twist out. And there are gonna be two more seven millimeter bolts in here. After that, we should be able to take the dash out by just pulling it towards us and lifting up. are the dash is out this is where those two seven millimeter bolts were kind of towards the front or the rear of the car i guess towards me but yeah she's not looking too great very dirty and i don't know stained and these cracks just look awful this doesn't even really sit very well on the dash so i think we got our work cut out for us as a nice added bonus, I can finally get rid of these two quarters that have been making it hard to read my VIN. Plus, look at that, we hit the freaking jackpot. <laughs> Someone must have been going to Coinstar, lost everything on their dash. Might be able to fund this project just by stuff we found in the car. And to get the airbag pad out, just a couple of nine millimeter nuts here. There we are. Last thing we're gonna need to remove, the side defroster vent here. What we're gonna do, first take out the housing piece of it, just four Phillips head screws. 
and then we're going to very, very, very carefully and gingerly pry this out. Try not to break. All right, next up, we're gonna wanna get this surface nice and flat, because right now, kinda hard to see, but basically the material kinda bows up where the crack is. So even if we covered it, we'd see these weird, you know, ridges left in it when, where the uh, material's folded up. So from what I was reading online, you should be able to just kinda cut it, you know, kinda get, uh, get your cutter in there but this stuff is so old and brittle before it cracked or before it cut, all it did was crack. So I'm gonna do a little unorthodox method here. Gonna take the old Dremel with a cutoff wheel and just kind of zip a couple of lines on the outside, peel it out, then we'll get ready to fill in with our dash pad filler. It's got to get worse before it gets better. But now we've got a nice channel that we can layer in some dash filler. And we'll get this uh, big old dash all leveled out before we cover it. I am going to go ahead and give it a good clean. Got very dirty stuff and all the foam dust I kicked up. So I want to make sure that glue sticks nice and good. Here is our pile of remnants. Pretty gross. Also gonna clean up the airbag cover here because we'll be covering that up too. All right, so the next day I decided to let it dry overnight. The foam was still a little wet when I washed it. So here we are, let's start filling these cracks. Said for a golf ball size amount of this, we're gonna use two inches of the hardener. So I'll see if I can get my mixture right here. All right, got a couple of spots done here. And I honestly might be running out of this. I might need some more. So I'm gonna let this dry. It says 20 to 30 minutes, and then we're gonna hit it with the sander, see if we can get it nice and smooth here. Here we are. Our filler has dried up. It's supposed to take 20 to 30 minutes, but we got some rain, so it's been drying for longer than that. Time to cut it down, get her nice and smooth. So I'm using the dual action sander here with 120 grit sandpaper. And then for some of these little corners right here, I got the barrel sander attachment for the Dremel. So let's go ahead and smooth this uh, filler out here. sand looking pretty good there are a few spots you know here and there where I did miss coverage didn't get quite as much filler as I wanted to so gonna clean this up wipe it down toss a little more filler in there get it with the sand and pretty soon this dash will be looking brand spanking new one of the coolest part about this polyvance filler is it's actually still a little squishy Maybe even more squishy than the actual dash. Really neat stuff. And here we are, all nice and smoothed out here. Even test fit the airbag and the vent just to make sure everything's fitting right. I didn't overfill. And we are in good shape. 
even this corner came together pretty well. Kind of felt like I was sculpting when I was sanding it, but you know, I think we're starting to get a hang of this. Next step, clean it up, get it ready, and then we'll go ahead and cover it with some vinyl. All right, we got her all nice and cleaned up. Now it's time to prep for gluing this vinyl on here. So what I'm gonna start with is this. It's just called vinyl prep. It's basically like a super cleaner for all things vinyl. So blast it, we'll wipe it off, and then we should have a nice clean surface that this glue will stick to. That's why we use the vinyl prep. Now while that dries, we can start kind of sizing out our vinyl here. I'm sure I got way too much, but better to have too much than not enough. Just making sure we got enough to tuck her in on the edges. Definitely enough on the front here. All right, here's the moment of truth. Just gonna spray down both sides of this. You know, some on the fabric, some on the thing we're attaching the fabric to. Let it sit, get tacky, and then we'll close it like a book. All right, we'll give it like five minutes, see if it's uh, starting to work, you know when it's uh, not dry enough, you'll touch it and some will come up with you. If it is dry, it just feels tacky, which this almost feels ready. Maybe that was enough time. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Looking good, let's get the other side on, then we'll start cutting out these details and really finishing her up. Look at that, we're starting to take shape. find my razor blade I'm gonna start cutting out these uh, little interior bits here getting them glued on. I think I'm just gonna use super glue to hold them on because uh, there are stuff that's going in them that will kind of keep them tight but that'll just give me a nice crisp bond there so we'll see how that goes. Look at that, we are fitting good. A little bit tighter now since I got a layer of new vinyl on it, but I mean, look at that. Got a few more things to cut out this, the old side defrosters. I gotta flip it over once I'm done, get the underside, but man, we're cruising along. This is gonna look awesome. So for the corner, I obviously had to do a little overlap. I just kind of ended up folding things over and then just trying to create a nice uniform crease. Threw a couple staples in for extra rigidity, you know? It looked a little bit better brand new, but I'm not about to spend a couple hundred bucks on a dash pad when this is gonna look just fine. And just like that, we have a fully recovered dash so the one thing, uh, working for my advantage here, this dash is about as flat as Nebraska. So that made it easy to just layer the um, vinyl on 
the only real trick I had were these corners here. But, um, you know, they're kind of tucked away underneath. You're not going to notice them that much. If you do have like a dash that has, you know, the circular gauge pods or anything like that, I doubt this is going to work for you. I know the, um, the brand that made that dash filler, they have like a nice kit where you can actually spray on texture and try to get it to look like that. Um, might be worth checking out, but I just wanted this nice, smooth, fresh new vinyl. Oh, this is going to look so good in the car. And you know what it is. Installation is the reverse or removal. I'm going to leave it a little disassembled here because I want to do something with the A-pillars. But look at that. It's a thing of beauty. No longer cracked and warped and dirty and spotted. This nice, pristine, smooth dashboard. And there you go. Nice, smooth dashboard. No more cracks, no more discoloration. It's a thing of beauty. One thing I do want to mention here, the airbag piece right there, it came in a little bit tighter than it uh, originally was. I'm no airbag expert. I don't know how that's going to affect it. I would hope that the airbag would just blast it open, but who knows? So, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt, you know, user discretion advised. Um, hopefully I won't be needing to use the airbags in this though. So thanks for watching.